Now to the news in detail. Today is the Buck Full Moon Prayer Day. Religious observances are being held at temples throughout the country to mark the day. It commemorates the second visit of the Buddha to Sri Lanka, which took place in the fifth year of his supreme enlightenment. <laughs> According to the chronicle Mahavansa, the Buddha visited Sri Lanka accompanied by a deity by the name of Samuddhi Sumana on such a buck full moon for a day. The Buddha is said to have perceived with his divine eye a dispute brewing between the two Sri Lankan Naga communities led by two kings Chulodara and Mahodara over a gem studded throne. His mission to Nagadipa was to settle a war between the two factions and bring peace. The Buddha spoke about the disadvantages of conflict, preached Dhamma and restored harmony among them. Meanwhile, the Naga king by the name of Maniakita, who had arrived from Kalania during this visit, invited him to visit Kalania. President Rajapaksa has emphatically stated that a strong parliament was vital to accelerate development in the country. The president referred to the need to speed up the development process. He needed the strength in this respect. He needed a strong parliament. It is of no use talking politics. Due consideration has to be given to children. The country should be built for them. That was their prime objective. He pledged to fulfill his responsibilities. The president was addressing a meeting at the residence of Anil Sollehin Nadi, chairman of the Tangal Urban Council. Senior Sri Lanka Freedom Party members were feted. Ministers Professor Gio Pierce and Mahinda Maravira were present. President Rajapaksa has underscored that their target is to ensure a secure future for the future generation. The president was addressing a mammoth public rally at Nikavaratya in Kurunagala. <laughs> Mama Sangwe di Darwa Winwe. Mamwarta Wakilwa. Mirate. The president said he is very much sensitive towards the children. He told the gathering that he had called for a report about children discarded by parents. A ministry was established to cater to the needs of children and women. There are some Urdi officers and midwives to report on the children. The president pointed out that he not only called for a dossier but hoped to launch a program on behalf of such children and make them more beneficial to society. He said they intend to build the country for the children and future generation. <laughs> The Nikavarati public meeting to ensure the victory of the Freedom Alliance at the upcoming general election was presided by the President. It was organized at the police training college grounds. A notable feature was the participation of mammoth crowds representing all electorates of the Kurunangala district. It is considered to be the public rally which had witnessed a large crowd so far in the election campaign. A highlight was the UNP Kurunagala Municipal Councillor Lal Prematilaka, opposition leader of the Nikavarati Pradesh Sabha Jayatilaka Maduranga and former UNP Provincial Councillor Upali Herad joining the Freedom Alliance and pledging their support to the President. Among the other speakers were Kurunagala District Freedom Alliance candidates Ministers S.B. Navinna, Johnston Fernando and Indika Bandaranaika, Ranjit Navaratna and Taranath Basnaika. 
Many political party representatives, including ministers Anurag Pradarshan Yapa and TBA Kanayaka, Janat Jawardana and RB Vimaladasa, joined in this rally. The army has emphasized that there is no truth in the claim that Sarat Fonseca's health was deteriorating. It pointed out that he is being attended by a doctor who has been appointed for 24-hour consultation. Services of doctors are available day and night to monitor the health condition of Sarat Fonseca, who is being detained at the naval headquarters to investigate allegations. According to the special Navy doctor who is attending to his medical needs, no complaints have been received on any deterioration of Sarat Fonseca's health condition. The doctor also said that he had not observed any deterioration. Arrangements have been made to provide him specialist advice and services at any time during 24 hours of the day. A specialist had fully examined Sarat Fonseca along with the Navy doctor who is serving him. A notable feat was the presence of Anoma Fonseca during the examination. No problems regarding his health condition had been reported during this consultation. The Army headquarters underlined that the Army is always geared to provide any specialized service, if necessary, to Sarat Fonseca. The Tamil Nadu government has accepted the Prison Advisory Board's recommendation to reject Rajiv Gandhi's assassin Nalini Sriharan's plea for premature release. The government also conveys its decision on plea of Nalini to the Madras High Court. The Prison Advisory Board today came up with eight counts as to why he should not be released. This surprise move comes just days after the state government had submitted the Prison Advisory Board's report on the same to the Madras High Court and sought two weeks' time to gather additional information on her. A Prison Advisory Board which had been set up to look into Nalini's pleas for premature release had earlier given a positive recommendation. Nalini's death penalty was commuted to life by the state government in April 2000 after the then governor allowed her clemency petition. Nalini had filed a petition in the Madras High Court asking for the Tamil Nadu government to convene the advisory board to consider her case for release from the jail. Nalini had been convicted on 16 counts of murder and found guilty under section 302 of Indian Penal Code on all 16 counts. Nalini was one of the accomplices in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case and had accompanied the other assassins to Sri Parumbudur. She is the wife of LTT member Murugan, who is also in jail facing death sentence. Nalini has been in prison for the last 19 years and has sent several petitions seeking premature release. You're watching Prime TV News and still with news at home. Demining teams operating in Baunia came across more weapons and mines buried and hidden by the LTTE during the operations yesterday. The Media Center for National Security reported that FSD demining team recovered an Arul bomb and two hand grenades during clearing operations conducted in Periapandivarichan area. The DDG demining team also recovered 25 anti personnel mines from Nutsikulam area. Vaunia yesterday in the Army 61st Division area. The Danish demining team conducting demining operations in Valaris in the Kulam area the same day recovered five anti personnel mines in the 563rd Brigade area, while a civilian recovered a hand grenade from Omante Vaunia also in 563rd Brigade area. Sri Lankan cinema and teledrama fans are in for a treat with the opportunity of viewing quality local films and teledramas that will be produced in the country's first telecinema park. The first stage of the Mahindi Rajapaksa National Telecinema Park at Ranmini Panna in Hambathadar will be open tomorrow. A pillow chanting ceremony was organized. It has attended by members of Mahasangha and a large gathering including Media Secretary W.P. Ganekala and Information Director Anusha Palpita.
The first stage of the park costs 600 million rupees. The park which is coming up on a 200 acre block of land is a gift awarded under the Mahindra Chintana to local cinema artists and those who desire entering the cinema industry. The president will present this award to the artist by himself. Japanese delegation including a high-ranking